The 2020 spring split of the LCS is almost upon us and it's looking to be a very exciting one. Lots of new players are moving into the region and some teams have made drastic transformations. So to talk all about it, we've invited Golden Glue to the show. Hey, how are you? Good, I'm doing well. Um Call me right before I started practice. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. It's our honor to have you here. Um, lots of new things have been happening for you and the Team Golden Guardians, of course. So let's start with the new branding. Why did the team decide it needed a new look? You know, I, I don't know entirely <laughs> behind the reasons why they decided to change, but I'm very glad they did because I really like the new, um, like, simplified logo. I'm a big fan of, um, I don't know, more, more like simple logos. Um, and they, I think they did an amazing job with the rebrand. The new, the new jerseys look great. The new logo looks great. So I'm really happy that I think I joined at the right time. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it does look really good. Um, but we've got to talk about the roster because the roster also has a new look. We have, of course, some familiar names like yourself in mid, and then we have Ponser in the top lane. But then we have Keith, who is a familiar face, but he's now in support. And then, of course, new to the LCS, we have Closer and FBI. So we have a whole new team here. Um, tell me about the team dynamic and how it's working on and off on the rift. Sorry, on and off the rift. So for the team dynamic, um, Hanser is kind of like our rock in the top lane. He's super consistent. He's a really smart player. Um, he's, you know, he's championship tier player. We have Closer who came from Turkey. He was like a Turkish all-star and he is really good. He's like mechanically uh, one of the best players I've ever seen. So I think me and him together are going to work uh, really well. And our ball lane is, it's that's kind of like the new, I guess, like, um, flavor or like spice the LCS because Keith just roll swapped and as soon as he roll swapped he the, the ball lane instantly went flew off to Korea and boot camp for about a month um, and they practiced and got built some synergy and I, I'm really excited to see how they do too and we started practice about a week and a half ago it's been going really well okay uh, for you in particular uh, I read some you know the articles the interviews that the team and you have been doing and it seems like there is some pressure on you to be the one that kind of puts the team together, there's some new rookies, I guess, to the, uh, the region here. Um, what, uh, how are you approaching entering the season? Um, there, does, there definitely is a little bit of pressure there uh, on my shoulders just to make sure I can bring, to, bring the team together. I think it also has to do with just my role in the game. When you play mid, you're kind of in the middle of the map and you're responsible for um, integrating the team with itself and deciding like what you're going to play for. Um, so I do feel some pressure. But after starting practice, it's it, it kind of went away. Like it feels like we're just doing what we're um, what we're natural at doing, and it feels really good. That's that's so great to hear. Uh, let's talk about those. I guess two new guys to the roster. Uh, you mentioned how Closer is from Turkey, and FBI, I believe, is from Australia. I know he yep. was in Academy for a while, so I'm sure you've had time to like meet him and hang out with him and talk to him and everything. Uh, but what is it like playing with players from like different regions? Are there actually any different habits or cultural differences or anything? So the cultural differences aren't that much. I would say the biggest culture difference between um, us is closer doesn't like very much food like he likes uh, very certain types of food that's what we've noticed like we can barely get this guy to eat anything um, and for Victor uh, FBI I don't really feel like much cultural difference he moved here about almost a year ago and I played with him I played against him when he was in academy and a little bit in LCS and he's a really hard worker I've never seen anyone play more games than FBI he will literally just wake up play League of Legends go to sleep like that's just all he does that's that you need that passion you need that drive to obviously to make it to the LCS and play and do well um just on the note with closer wait so like what does America not have that he eats like it doesn't make sense okay so um <laughs> if it doesn't have chicken or steak it's like not edible for him <laughs> interesting so you guys are trying to break him in are you exposing him to new <laughs> new things yeah yeah we definitely have showed him a couple things and he's like oh i'm not gonna like this and then he tries it and he's like oh actually you know that was pretty good so it's kind of like that's kind of like what my mission is, is <laughs> to get him to try new food and actually like it that's hilarious uh good luck on that one uh let's talk about also the roster uh the team has who he right uh listed as a support so i mean it's safe to assume that you guys will be like alternating back and forth between the two um how is that going to work for the team and do you feel like just the region um uses like subs well compared to other regions 
So we have him as a – he was our academy player. Uh-huh. So there's definitely potential for him to move back and forth, but that's not the plan right now. Right now our plan is to go full on with Keith, and if it, – it's kind of hard just using subs in North America because we play in a best-of-one format. So it's kind of like you play one game, uh-huh. and you – can't really sub someone in for the next game right because the game's already over the set's already over i think korea who has a best of three format or lpl um they can use subs a little bit better because you can actually like watch the first game oh like you could basically sub someone in for a reason and during a series but for na we only have we only have best of series and playoffs and you don't really want to risk putting in a sub in playoffs usually mm-hmm Mm-hmm. So would you like to see, like, for subs to work in the future in NA, you would like to see a format change in that sense? Um, or you're okay with no, it we, right now? <laughs> I, I'm okay with best of ones. I think best of threes for, like, competitive integrity definitely is better. Um, I think that a couple of years back when we franchised and we tried to do best of threes in the NA LCS, it went really poorly. Um, and I think it wasn't necessarily just because of the format. I think it was because kind of, you know, Riot s- swapped off the twitch.tv slash Riot game stream. They tried to make like NALCS1 mm-hmm. and NALCS2. So they basically tried to start a brand new Twitch channel that had zero followers. Um, I'm fine with the current format, but I mean, in a in a perfect world, yeah, I would like, I'd rather have BO3. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's interesting, you know, now in the region, we're seeing a lot of teams almost have like two people in one role, some, a lot of switching between Academy and the main uh, LCS. Uh, and I wanted to bring up like earlier, or I guess November in 2019, Paul Belter made a statement on Twitter saying how he's a veteran player, but it was so hard for him to find um, a team, right? So I feel like you yourself must have experienced something similar. So tell me more about being a player during like the off season and looking for teams. Do you feel like teams are approaching team building the right way? Um, yeah, so I can t- tell you what the typical off season is for the most player. If you're not an all star player, if you're not like Bjergsen or Double Lift or something like that, where you know like all these teams really want you and they want to build your team around you, it's a lot of a waiting game. It's kind of there's a lot of moving pieces and you basically just end up waiting for someone to make a decision about you. And it's like a, it's really a like high anxiety time because Mm -hmm. there's nothing you can really do. You're just waiting for people to say like, Oh, we want this player or not. And then it's also, there's situations that arise where it's like, okay, they only want to get you if this other team picks up this player and then they have to trade this player. So it's like a huge domino effect and everyone's just kind of waiting um and it's definitely it's pretty hard or it's just frustrating because a lot of perceptions of you or or any player is super important like that's what the team owners think about is they have these perceptions of you that might not be accurate but you're not getting a job because of it um so that can be frustrating i think that's how paul belter felt i think he felt that the perceptions of him were different than the reality for him Mm-hmm. But that affected him and his ability to find a team, and he wasn't able to find one. Mm-hmm. Um, so he, he's actually a coach now for Team Liquid. But fun, funny, funnily enough, he's going to be probably jungling for them week one since he, their jungler doesn't have a visa yet. Um, yeah. But luckily for me, so like I've been playing for a long time. Almost all my off seasons have been like that. This off season was a little bit better for me. Um, basically like the day after our season ended and our season ended really early. Um, I had a talk with golden guardians and they straight up just told me they wanted me as their starter. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I I was really fortunate this off season. Um, but even, even with them telling me that it still was like a a two or three month process of Mm -hmm. like actually joining the team and like negotiating and figuring everything out. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Such a stressful time, I'm sure, for players, but you're in a good spot now. Uh, we're almost out of time. However, I do want to get your thoughts. So, you know we love power rankings as much as we say we hate power rankings. So, ESPN, yeah, I believe, <laughs> ESPN, I believe, just put out their uh, power ranking or um, for the NALCS, and they gave Golden Guardians a C grade. So, okay. what would you say to that? And maybe just kind of preview the split for us as we wrap up. Yeah, I actually don't really blame people for thinking that we're going to be 
doing that so well. Like a lot of people, if you if, if if you look at our roster on paper, there's a bunch of question marks, right? We have a role swap. We have some players who you've never really seen before. Um, you know, some closer or, or Keith and their roles and me and FBI haven't really done much recently. So I think it's fair. Um, and I actually, I'm, I'm glad people think we're going to not do so hot because we're really going to blow everyone's expectations. We're a lot better than people think we have really good, um, we have really good individual skill. We have really good team atmosphere. So we're growing. Like we've been practicing for a week and we, I can like tell how much we're growing every day. Um, so like, I actually, I love being the underdog. I love the underdog mentality. So I don't care. Like I want everyone to think we're going to be bad. And then we're just going to come, come into LCS and smash everyone. Awesome. Well, we're almost out of time, but if you had to pick a rival for the season, who would it be? Who do you really want to beat? Cloud nine. Like it's so easy. I just want to, yeah, I, we, we play them week one and I am so pumped. I've told all my teammates that we cannot lose. Like I will not accept it. Um, I, I'm looking forward to that. I, I love them, but I just, you know, it's, you have to be your past team. A hundred percent. Wishing you best of luck. You should really put something on the line to make, you know, it even spicier. But yeah. Golden Glue, good luck. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it a lot.